Welcome back, friends. Jamie here with you. Formerly your Emerald GM. I don't know what I am. Yes, I'm sad to report, as a quick aside, that I had to finally close my Emerald Spire campaign after a year and a half. A year and a half is actually a pretty decent run for an online campaign, so that's nothing to be sad about. Uh, we completed about half of Thornkeep and the first two levels of Emerald Spire. Um, but during the pandemic, my workload has been increasing exponentially. I'm considered an essential worker at my job. I work in the healthcare industry. And um, Wednesday is the end of my work week. I kept having delays, found myself rushing and running all the way to get to the computer, almost being late several times over the last couple months. And um, it just wasn't working anymore. Wednesday is just not a good night for me. <laughs> For me to run that game, so thank you to all my players that stuck it out. Thank you to anybody that stumbled across any of these videos. But today we're going to talk about something else. I saw a recent tweet from Owen Casey Stevens, who has a Patreon, by the way, which you should check out. That um, Green Ronin, Green Ronin Publishing, the creators of the Freeport campaign setting, are in need of some help. So I thought, well. What can I do? I'll talk about Freeport a little bit because I have some experience with Freeport. I have run um, at least two adventures um, that were completely written for Freeport, and I have used their campaign setting. So, let's talk about it, shall we? Oh, by the way, forgive my gruffy look, but it's like I've been wearing a mask every day. Who cares if I shave or not, right? But So you guys have to live with it. All right, let's talk about Freeport, Freeport. Look at this sucker. Okay, so on the website, this is still available. It's got a $75 price tag. That's a whopping price tag, but I'm going to tell you what. It's worth every penny. This book is solid. It's, it's well made. Um, the binding is holding together really well. The colors in it are vivid. And it's a complete city source book. Um, and in the book itself... You can see here about to fall out because I use this awkward setup on my shelf. You can see it has a removable map that comes with it because you need a good map if you're going to have a city. And you even have, as a quick reference for your GM, you've got the Freeport city map right there inside. And this baby is just packed with NPCs, stats, timelines, just, just everything. I mean, if the idea of a you know, an adventure in a city, specifically a, a pirate port city that's filled with uh, strange cults that make um, dark dealings with Cthulhu cults and elder gods and the such. Then this is for you. Um, I've run, uh, as I said earlier, two adventures. I used one as a plug-in for running book two of Rise of the Rune Lords, believe it or not, because my, my players had to had to take the boat to get over to um, to Sandpoint, so I thought, well, I'll run this this one adventure as a plug-in. That plug-in came from Dungeon Magazine, Dead Man's Quest, Freeport Adventure by Graham Davis. Here you can see this was in issue February 2004. Recommend grabbing it. Uh, you can still probably get it directly from Paizo, the publisher at the time. Um, there you can see it. Actually, the the poly polyhedron segment for that issue um, and it's essentially it's, it's just a great little plug-in of a uh, seaside seaside trip and what happens there you go dead man's quest check that out so this was a great little plug-in I think I ran it in total in two adventures it might have been one i don't remember it's been a it's been a few years okay but it was really good and that's one of the great things about freeport adventures and this setting itself and specifically the 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 big city of adventure book the 75 five dollar book um 
is that it's so modular you can just use the pieces you need and leave the rest out um, you know not all players or GM's like to run sandbox adventures okay but those that do this is as sandboxy as you can get this is like the definition of the sandbox and it should be considered the gold standard i mean adventure seeds adventures inside uh, you know new feats of course now this is pathfinder based but there's enough there's enough information in here that is about the setting and the city itself and the NPCs that it justifies having this for really for any any setting. If you run Pathfinder Second Edition, you can you can use this. If you run Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, you can use this. If you run Swords and Wizardry, you can use this. Um, of course, if you run Pathfinder First Edition with mythic rules like I do, ding, then you can use this. And uh, I highly recommend it. I mean, for a group, you can probably get five years worth of adventures, a mega campaign out of a book like this. So if you can get, you know, four of your players and your GM to chip in 10, 20 bucks a piece and get this book for your group, it's worth it. It is so worth it. One of the great things about it, as I said, it was modular. You can use what you want. But it it works to help you flesh out any sort of pirate campaign, pirate city, in your campaign. As I said, I used uh, the actual Freeport Adventure um, from uh, that Dungeon Magazine in the seas outside of Sandpoint. Okay, but I also used um, the adventure here from the Freeport Companion. This is not a great book, but it is a good book filled with uh, more stats, more NPCs, feats, some magic items. And it has a, a starter adventure in the back to introduce you to Freeport. And again, it's a very sandboxy adventure for players that like those kind of adventures. This is for them. It was made for them. What's it called? It's Fury and Freeport, I believe, if I can, if I can find it. Yeah, okay, you see all my GM notes there. I am a true gaming heathen. Listen, you see all these books over here? Nobody wants to buy these from me. Look at this. The much maligned Oriental Adventures falling to freaking pieces. Okay? So, yeah, I'll write in my books. I don't give a crap. Nobody's going to buy this from me. <laughs> so there's a GM tip for you. Uh, highlight your skill check DCs in yellow. Underline anything important. And uh, there you go. I put read aloud. Read this aloud so that I know what I'm doing. And uh, I'll put little check marks for items to make sure people don't miss anything. So anyway, this is a starter adventure if you're in Freeport. Uh, it's, it's a great way to introduce your players to the city. Now, I didn't even run this in Freeport, okay? I ran this in the Midgard setting, believe it or not. Midgard by Cobalt Press. Uh, they have uh, a, a pirate-based port city named Barcella in in uh, Midgard. And, uh, you know, I just used Freeport and changed the name to, to Barcella. Um, at least as far as the Pathfinder versions go, they share a common writer um, in Christina Stiles. She wrote a lot for um, Green Ronin. And uh, she also wrote for um, Cobalt Press or Open Design, whatever it was called at the time, and helped develop develop their um, their port city and their their pirate adventures and whatnot. So, you know, in my mind, at least she she helped make it very easy to say, "Hey, Freeport can easily be Barcelo," or you can just take Freeport and drop it whole into any campaign. You know, if you if you just want to place it inside Galarian. Just pick a spot in the shackles and put it there. If you want to run it in Midgard, just place it somewhere along the coastline. There's plenty of space between Barcella and Bamea. Place it anywhere out there. You can use Freeport whole cloth. Here's the Freeport bestiary. It's got some cool, um, unique creatures in it. You can see uh, serpent folk are a feature of Freeport. I don't have... No, I do have... I do have the 
the Shadow Lord adventure. I just don't have it right here. I think it's uh, it's on my adventure shelf. Um, it was the original Freeport adventure called Death in Freeport, um, which I, which I do recommend. It's pretty cool. I have the uh, what is it called Log Saga of the Shadow Lord or whatever. I mean, it's it's been turned into kind of like its own um, D and D retro clone. But anyway, the adventure itself is really good. You can use it for pretty much any edition um, of the game that you prefer to play. If you're like me and you love all the crunchy mechanics of Pathfinder and the power it gives your players, you can still retain your power as a GM to make your own rulings and fiats, because that's what GMs do. But you can let your players have some agency of their own and design the most intricate, mechanical, and fantastic um, PCs to ever come out of any role-playing system in my humble opinion of course that's just me talking but anyway so if you've been looking for a great sandbox if you've been wanting to run a, a pirate campaign here you go free port is waiting for you and there are plenty of adventures that are based in it there was a whole string of adventures that created a continuity that were published for third edition. I have a few of them, such as Tales from Freeport and whatnot. Maybe I'll do a second video in a couple weeks and kind of talk about those. But for now, I, I wanted to recommend this and uh, wish the folks at Green Ronin the best. You can still get this book from their website. Please do. It's pricey, but it's worth it. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. And remember, Orcus is watching. Yep, I painted that. That's why I'm showing it.